Andrew Pulaski and I'm a senior here at Michigan. I'm a student manager over at East Quad Dining and I also work at the Maze and Blue Cupboard. So we're here with Tony, who's the executive chef at Mojo, and he's gonna run through our recipe and we're gonna just talk a little bit about what's in it and what you can do to participate. Hi, I'm Chef Tony from Mojo Jordan Dining Hall, University of Michigan. Today, we're going to uh, prepare a black bean breakfast burrito um, for the Maize and Blue Cupboard. Um, fun fact about Michigan, Michigan is a one of the largest producers of beans in the country, so this is a great dish um, to support local Michigan farmers. With that being said, let's jump right in and make the taco. We're gonna need tortillas, of course, which you can use flour or corn, depending on your liking. Uh, um, some cracked eggs and black beans, and your choice if you'd like to keep it vegan, vegetarian, you add cheese and other vegetables as you'd like. So if you're looking to make this at home and you don't like black beans or any sort of other beans, uh, the Maize and Blue Cupboard is a great place to go. We've got canned pork, canned chicken, all sorts of canned tuna and salmon, um, and a great array of frozen meats. Um, so it's a great way to add that in. But of course, if you're vegan and vegetarian, uh, it's super sustainable. Uh, it keeps your carbon footprint low. We're going to show you how to do it. So continue on, we have uh, our tortillas. We have flour tortillas here. We have our scrambled egg that we made. Now, when you're scrambling an egg, you want to make sure that you whip the egg really well so that uh, the yolk and the uh, whites are mixed together evenly. This way, you're going to have the best cooking egg. And remember, slow and low is going to work the best. So you don't overcook your egg, dry it out, brown it, or burn. And then we're going to top it off with some of our sauteed black beans here and by liking if you would like to add some nice peppers nice crunch to it you could add onions mushrooms sauteed mushrooms zucchini squash different kinds of cheese we have a little monterey jack cheese here all sorts of produce you can find in the cupboard yes the farmers drop it off after the farmers markets what they have left and it looks beautiful actually we'll say so we have three, three tacos here. We garnish with a little lime. It's a great breakfast starter. If you would like to change some things up with it, what works really well is if you take the black beans, and you can substitute them out for maybe sausage. And you'd have um, sausage, egg, and whatever vegetables you would like. Or you can add sausage to the black beans, which would work really well. If you have leftover black beans at the end, end of your meal, you can take the leftovers and smash them up, make a refried bean out of it, and uh, do some, some very similar things. For lunch and dinner, you can take that same bean or refried bean, add cheese, uh, chicken, or another protein of some sort. Also would work really well is potatoes. If you want to have a potato burrito, which is really popular, and uh, have fun with it. And one thing that's super important when you're cooking especially at home, um, is reducing your food waste. So like Tony just explained, there's tons of ways that you can mix up with leftovers. Um, one third of the food that we bring home is often thrown in the trash. Um, so finding creative ways to reintroduce your ingredients into new dishes is always super important and great on your carbon footprint. And now we have Bridget and Chef Tony here. We're gonna move on and make a uh, tomato and garbanzo bean stew. Yeah. Bridget. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk a little bit before we do that about the Maize and Blue Cupboard. Um, so the Maize and Blue Cupboard is free for anyone with an M card. Um, and we have a great selection of produce, dry goods, canned goods, all sorts of stuff. I mean, our inventory changes week to week. Um, so my favorite thing about the Maize and Blue Cupboard is being able to provide a great resource for my fellow Wolverines. Um, and also I get to meet new people. And then we have Tony back again. All right, here we go. We have a nice hot, uh, soup pan. We're going to add a little bit of uh, olive oil to it and uh, we've got some zucchini. We're going to add zucchini to the pan nice and hot. This is pretty key to get a nice stew, especially when you're cooking with zucchini. You want to make sure that you're uh, cooking in a nice sear and to maybe give it a little bit of color to it and remove some of the moisture. This way you add flavor and not just a, a uh, a squishy vegetable inside your stew. So this, this process will take about three to five minutes to get cooked. Once it's cooked down, you can add garlic and then the rest of the ingredients. So is there anything else that we can add into the stew that you know would make it taste better? Any other sorts of vegetables? Well, as we have here, we have um, asparagus, 
Michigan is known for having a great asparagus harvest. We, all, we can also add mushrooms, right? These are portobello mushrooms. You can add any type of mushroom, dried mushrooms will work great. Peppers, uh, kale, spinach. What else do we have? What else do you, do you guys carry over at the Mesa Blue Cover? Can we potatoes work in there? For potatoes would be great, yeah. Okay. Do our farmers bring the potatoes to you guys? Yes. Excellent. So once you have the zucchini saute, you can go ahead and add your tomatoes, your garbanzo beans, and your little bit of water to it, and allow this to simmer for the next 15 minutes or so. I'll throw that back on the stove and be right back at you. Okay, and now we have our uh, our tomato and garbanzo bean stew. At this point, it doesn't necessarily have to be garbanzo beans and tomatoes. Tomatoes work really nice to bind everything together, but if you didn't have garbanzo beans, you can use black beans, pinto beans, lentils, right? Everything would work really well. You can substitute this plate out for anything. If you have leftovers in your refrigerator, rice, we have rice in the uh, cupboard. Yeah, so that would that would go well to like serve over rice or pasta. Exactly. Okay, great. This would be a great dish. You'd get all your B vitamins if you serve it over rice. If you have leftover chicken, pork, salmon, whatever it may be, create a whole dish out of, out of just this stew. So to finish the dish, works really well. Some fresh herbs, this is basil from our garden. Uh, dried basil would work really well too. Uh, a little squeeze of lime juice, you don't have a lime. A fruit vinegar would work, such as a cider vinegar. And you have a delicious stew, very similar to ratatouille. Once again, my name is Bridget Pulaski. And, and I'm Chef Tony Piccadotti. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi again. For those of you participating in the Earth Fest scavenger hunt, we have a clue for you. This resident hall is home to one of UM's community gardens. Volunteering here is a great way to learn about community agriculture and get to know other people. Once you figure out the answer to our clue, visit that location on campus for a secret code to lead you to the next clue. For those of you participating remotely, you can visit our online campus sustainability map located at this link. Good luck.